Well, uh, basically, uh, I could say two things. Generally, we talk about what studies we, do, we have done. Um, I've been in, uh, in art school for five years, but uh, before I was in art school, I was already involved into uh, sound experiments. S um, during a, a part of my lifetime, I was working in an art gallery as a, you know, helping doing things. And uh, in the meantime, a friend of mine have uh, opened an alternative gallery in Strasbourg, in the east of uh, France. And we started to play with guitars and pedal effects and doing maximum noise. It was clearly uh, a sort of uh, maximum amplification and whatever. It was pretty punk <laughs> by the time. And uh, on the other side, my uh, as a student, which started a little bit later, uh, I quickly bring sound into my work. I was quickly feeling that uh, playing with uh, material, uh, aesthetic, was not exactly what the territory I wanted to explore as an art student. And uh, it was not, uh, absolutely not uh, common by the time it was in early 90s, mid, mid 90s when I was a, a student. But this is a time where I definitely uh, work with sound as a material, as a dimension of space and perception. Uh, so my uh, fifth grade diploma was just three different type of sound installations. And it was the very first time in, uh, in this school in Grenoble that uh, some student would propose that. After five years of fight between some of my teachers who think I was doing music, so I had to go in another place, like Irkam, for example. And I was convinced I was not doing music, but clearly a sort of uh, plastic art uh, uh, work. So this is the beginning. On one side, this sort of uh, um, post-industrial, post-experimental uh, uh, noise uh, work, and uh, a more focused uh, work on frequencies in space. Um, the most important background, basically, is not really coming from school, because uh, I've I didn't learn so much in school as I was doing something new, and I had to teach uh, my teachers uh, about uh, sound art, for example, and uh, important names about that. What I was uh, mainly uh, doing was listening to records. <laughs> so I'm basically a, a big music fan, and doing music was just first a sort of uh, experiment, trying to do something, and uh, with the time, it, become, it became to be my main activity, uh, composer, composer and uh, sound artist. Well, tonight uh, I'm, I'm playing with an electroacoustic uh, set. This uh, is a set that I've developed for the last, uh, let's say, 10 years. At the beginning, it was very different. But slowly, I gathered certain elements. What is uh, still there since the beginning is that I'm not using um, instruments <laughs> in a regular way, and I don't have expensive instruments. So I could do that for other projects. But this project, uh, original idea of a name, but I forget about giving it a name, was a music for um, junk and, uh, and objects, something like that. Well, now, I don't think it's very important to know if it's junk's object or whatever. But an interesting dimension is to use uh, uncommon devices, except this little uh, analog synthesizer was really practical for having frequencies and sometimes could be what I'm playing most. But I also built the, the music with other type of, uh, of um, relationship with object, especially, uh, for example, uh, using what basically is a cheap fan to, when it's too warm in the summertime. And uh, I just add a small uh, rope, very soft. And the idea was to play a sort of uh, Joe harp.
this is exactly what we use with a phaser or certain electronic device. What is interesting is to play something with confusion, with listening. Uh, we are not listening to electronic music. I'm playing a phase out of my mouth, just by a natural phenomenon. I'm pretty obsessed by natural phenomenon and how uh, it's happening. Uh, a big part, like 20 years of my artistic work, was to record uh, outside machines, uh, natural phenomenons. And also when I'm playing with uh, an instrument like guitar, as I used to play for a long time, I'm, I was only trying to find a way as a string were naturally producing harmonics. So it's a very intense source of inspiration and, um, and, uh, and also a, a, a permanent tool in my music because harmonics are creating a form of song by their own processor. And it's interesting that uh, the work is only to frame this phenomenon. So it's just observing a beautiful natural phenomenon going on, just like standing by the sea or in front of a forest when it's windy, that type of uh, inspiration. But of course really uh, means something for me <laughs> because I'm spending a lot of time outside. That's why most of my music also sounds like a, a landscape so very often. Sometimes I feel like um, I'm, I'm using sound but I'm creating a, a sort of painting uh, of a landscape, maybe even a bit more, like uh, cr recreating the uh, experience of a landscape. And I think it's really interesting to use a stupid object. And um, so I have my sort of uh, favorite stuff, of course, that I've found with the time. And another tool that I really like to use is a bat detector. Uh, this tool is to be used generally at night when you go for a walk and uh, you switch it on and you have a very strong uh, uh, blowing, which is natural, but then you also hear every, uh, any form of, um, any form of uh, ultrasound because with this little thing, we can transform ultrasound into sound that we can hear. So for example, that I have set a certain object, like for example, this little uh, um, opium seed. It's not opium exactly, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, this flower, poppy, big poppy. And uh, this is an amazing thing, because if I play it there, you won't hear a thing. Any dogs, any animal able to listen to some uh, ultrasound will turn to be completely crazy, because what's happening exactly and I'm covering all the frequencies of this object. Generally, I have something around uh, 60,000 kilohertz, uh, 30,000 kilohertz, and this is covering all, all the frequencies. So there is also a sort of fascination for the nature of, uh, of sound phenomenon. Of course, it could turn to be a magical experience if you use it in a certain way. And I have also uh, secret objects. And working with amplification allows me to, uh, to, to give uh, a bigger uh, dimension of uh, these small little events. And so I can build my landscape out of these uh, uh, tiny events, but focused and then suddenly enhanced. This is uh, a, a big part of that type of uh, work. Originally, this set was done to be able to interact with other people, to make some uh, collaboration, improvised, and uh, it turns to be a sort of laboratory where I can do my uh, different type of work. Mm. They're very practical. It's almost an analog synthesizer at uh, some, um, I mean, more a modular system, let's be precise, because uh, all the pedal effects also allow me to transform. Once the, the sound are into the looper, if I use the looper, uh, then I can also start to work with uh, transformation in a more electronic, more familiar electronic way. So it's very practical. I can move and I can uh, um, recreate the condition of what I do in studio because the main part of my work is working in studio as a composer. Uh, electroacoustic composer. Now it's, uh, of course, uh, a tool that I use very often, so it's more uh, simple to. Uh, it's interesting to develop uh, an instrument out of uh, cheap devices like that. Eventually, there is not so much money here going on, and it's still possible to create something really beautiful. And with 
this uh, question about uh, what are we listening exactly and how are we listening. Sometimes suddenly I cut everything, there is no longer sound and I use the natural sound. And I move from the table so people realize that uh, something strange is really going on. All these sounds that we thought were electronics were indeed just... Uh, mm. I like this type of uh, ambiguity with uh, sound phenomenon. About uh, my collaboration projects, there is one which is still going on even if it's very rare now. Uh, I used to play uh, to, to, I mean, I'm, I've designed a, a glass instrument. The system is very simple. It's the uh, wine glass that you make whistle by the, with the finger, but the feet is hollow and uh, there is a little uh, uh, pipe so you can plug uh, a tube, flexible tube, and we have pockets at our feet filled with water. So when you press the, wa the, the pocket, the water filled the glass and you can modulate by the pressure uh, on, on the pockets uh, the, the tonality. And I play this instrument with my wife and uh, we have three glasses, a big, a medium and a small, and then we interact creating uh, patterns, creating uh, uh, beatings, uh, many acoustic phenomena, and uh, we, s we learn how to compose in a more regular way with notes because we know that we can make that type of combination of chords and we play this way. We played this instrument for almost uh, um, now, it was, the first concert was 2001, so now it's a long, long old story. And it's really rare right now because I have many other projects. Um, one of the basic duet I have is with my friend Etienne Coussira, who now live in the mountain, in the Pyrenees mountain. And this is a, co a collaboration that could take many different aspects. Sometimes it's uh, just a, a sort of studio collaboration. I take his sound and I compose with his sound some uh, electroacoustic compositions. And sometimes we play live. We used to play rock for a while also. So it could take many different aspects. And um, an ongoing project, collaboration project, is with uh, Lionel Marchetti, my friend Lionel Marchetti. We both live in Lyon. Uh, we go for walking very early in the morning from time to time, and some other time we are playing music together. So I use this set, and the interaction is super strong. But from time to time, we also have used some acoustic sets, which is sort of strange. Uh, there were only uh, some loudspeaker with small amplifier, but tiny, and generally used as membranes to make vibrate uh, different objects. So it's a strange uh, collaboration that could take many shapes also. I'd like to, uh, to be involved in, in projects that could uh, easily evolve from one thing to another. I, I, I don't stay in one uh, uh, dimension. I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty uh, unpredictable. I even d don't really know when I start a project what uh, final shape it will take sometimes, even if uh, there is a certain uh, uh, homogeneity in my work. From one, one work to another, it's different. So I'm composing a lot, and I always have like three or five uh, composition uh, in, in my hand. And right now, I'm, I'm working on a, a Composition based on uh, Scandinavian poetry uh, was uh, really uh, fascinated by certain uh, uh, poet, especially the first the work I'm doing right now is with uh, some text of Eva Lisa Manner. She's from Finland, and uh, I was interested in two things. It was a, a woman, and uh, and she was from the, the north. And there is two aspects in her poetry. Sometimes very close to shamanism, and sometimes just a simple observation of what is nature and our position in it. So there is a certain deep uh, uh, dimension in this uh, poetry and uh, it, it inspired me to create some soundscape influenced by the idea of the North and I'm pretty obsessed by uh, the Great Northern. And suddenly it, it might be also a bigger project with, uh, because now I have some poets I love from Nor uh, Norway, uh, another one from Sweden, and, uh, and uh, one from Denmark, three women and one man. This is interesting. <laughs> and uh, I'm asking to um, some friend who speak this language to have the original language. So it's really interesting to use um, the color of this uh, uh, typical uh, language, and especially uh, Finnish one is really strange and musical. 
So it was interesting to have a soundscape and a voice lost in the soundscape.